What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, Jay Diesel, and we are back at it with Under the Radar. And here is Master Floki himself alongside me. Episode 6. Oh my god. Guys, we have a jam-packed show. It is final round week. Things are about to get wild. <sighs> it's going to be a good day. Are you excited, Jay? Absolutely. I am 100% excited for this one. And we have an absolutely phenomenal guest tonight. The man with the zero mortal plan. No Kami himself. Give it up. What is good, my man? What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for having me. Um, no when Floki contacted me about possibly doing this, um, not only has he been a really good friend to me and a, just a, a player that I respect, uh, anytime, any, any, any time I get to talk about Goku Black, I'm going to take the opportunity. So thank you guys a lot for having me. Absolutely, my man. And we will be doing plenty of that today because we're going to be unpacking all kinds of good stuff right here. Now, for those of you who might not know you, Slim, I know, but why don't you talk a little bit about yourself, like where you come from, your scene, all that jazz. Uh, well... I was uh, was born born in Brooklyn, New York, and from outside of living there for a couple of years, I um, well, well, let me not say it like that. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I lived there for about ten years. Um, right. Always been big on sports. Uh, big, I'm a big reader. All those good, all that good stuff. From the time when I, I guess when I was about ten, eleven, I think I was eleven. I moved down to North Carolina and. Ever since then, I have been here in the South, which is also really good. They're different places, but they both have a lot of merits. I, from the time I moved there, you know, North Carolina, really, really big on basketball. So I played a lot of basketball. When I got to high school, though, I was, I'm not the tallest guy, I'm about 5'10", and I wasn't good at ball handling, right? So I kept playing, but I wasn't the strongest player. I wasn't going to go to college for anything. So I picked up football. I was always a really stocky guy. Even now, I'm about 235 pounds. I'm pretty, for my height, a lot of weight. So I was always really stocky in it. Um, I played football, made the varsity team freshman year. And from there, it was a big part of my life uh, competing like that. I graduated uh, a couple years ago. And from there, I went on to attempt, attempt to play college football after getting a scholarship, I ended up hurting my leg. Oh, I damn. Leg pretty, yeah, I hurt my leg pretty bad. And, you know, that's okay. Things happen to people. You got to get up and you bounce back from it. But it did uh, require me to have two separate surgeries on my leg. And throughout that time, I was really wondering whether I wanted to keep playing and stuff like that. And I decided not to. But after deciding not to, I really, really, really needed a way to still compete so i went on to think about what i was going to do you know what i thought about doing uh, as the ufc was really popping so i thought about doing that i'm actually a blue belt in jiu-jitsu that's a fact a lot of people what? don't know wow yeah, yeah. this is some hidden lore right here this is this yeah. is good yeah. yeah i was trained in the dark arts uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm actually a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. I trained Muay Thai from the time I was about 14 to the time I was 17. Um, but that that was kind of a side thing. I was mostly playing football. So I thought about doing that. And I, I, I thought about doing it heavy. I really considered it. But I was like, hey, man, I don't know if I really want hurting people to be my uh, gig. I'm more of a martial arts purist, which is like self-defense only. So... I really respect what the, what those guys in UFC do, but you know, even when I played football, whenever I would hurt someone or something, like that, I always felt really bad. So I said, "That's not for me." What's next? Light bulb goes off in my brain, and I say, "Hmm, maybe real fighting is not the thing. Maybe uh, you can do something else." And I had always played Street Fighter um, the the mornings before I went to school throughout uh, junior high. And high school, I would play because I would wake up early and I would play Street Fighter online and be salty and never really was that good. But I ended up seeing Evo randomly in 2012. That's when Filipino Champ won. 
Oh, F champ. Yep. Yeah, and I saw the Magneto combos, and I said, wow, that looks really cool. And I saw Dormammu, which is my favorite, favorite Marvel character, Dormammu. So after seeing Dormammu and seeing him charge the powers and the meteors and yep. something, all that stuff, I was like, wow. I, no, I saw Stalking Flare, and I was like, that looks cool. And I wanted to uh, play after that. And I, from there, I picked up Marvel 3. This was right around the time um, Marvel 3 was really, really, really popular. Uh, the TAC the TAC combos were getting found out. Not the infinite. But Marlon Pye was doing the crazy TAC combos. And it was just a really cool time for me during um, around then. I actually had to replace my Marvel disc four or five times because I, I played it so much and my Xbox was trash. It would scratch <laughs> up my games. That's so, crazy. Yeah, wow. So my mother... My mother, I didn't have a car from the time I was 12 to like, by the time I was 15, she drove all, all across North Carolina because our, our, we didn't have a GameStop close to us. So they, we would have to go different places. So you had to hunt for new copies of Marvel after sacrificing them to your Xbox. The sacrifice. You know, that's how it be though. You know, yeah. when you're doing a Mamu combos like that. And, uh, <laughs> I definitely agree that. So yeah, that, that game is a... A uh, big part of why I even play fighting games. If, if I don't cut on, I think it was on, was it, I either cut on Twitch or I randomly cut on, uh, I think it was the G4 channel and, and saw something happen. No, I, it was Twitch. It had to be Twitch because the Evo is only streamed there. But I randomly cut on Twitch one day because I was never, I've never been a huge gamer. Um, even the internet. I generally kind of just use Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. That's pretty much right. it. But, and I, of course, Twitter occasionally, but, um, oh, just a little me, bit, just not as much as many other people that, you know what? All me, right. I'll give you that one. You got that. I one. respect that. For me, Twitch, um, was something I was completely new to. So I saw it and Evo had like a hundred thousand viewers or 80,000. I clicked it. I saw those Magneto combos. And from then I was hooked. So that's a little bit of stuff about me. Marvel 3. And then you also come from a background of playing Guilty Gear. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. Guilty Gear. I So, um, there was a game that came out in 2016. It's the fifth iteration of a certain game series. And I really wanted to get into it, but I really didn't like that game. I disliked that game a lot. So I needed another game to play because at that point, the, unfortunately, Marvel 3 had died down a lot. And Street Fighter 4 died. Not died, but the new iteration came out. He, right. he who must not be named. Right, 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 right. So I didn't want to play that anymore. I had one of, I actually won a couple of tournaments for that locally. I didn't want to play it because I felt like I wasn't better than the people I was beating, all this stuff. Yeah. So I picked up Guilty Gear. Um, before Guilty Gear, though, I had played uh, Tekken Tag 2 and KOF 13. Shouts to Juicebox. Juicebox? And juice, juice box is probably the reason why I have the uh, a lot of the outlooks I have on fighting games. Watching his KOF 13 videos, just amazing to me. They're amazing content. I never played the game as much as I wanted to because it's just, there's just no scene for it. But I do really appreciate everything he does. So in Tekken Tag 2, really enjoyed Tekken. So I played that. That game taught me how to to what that game taught me fighting games. KOF 13 got me to love fighting games, but Guilty Gear taught me how to become a good fighting player. Really because... kind of helped ground you there. Yeah, because Guilty Gear, I don't know, It's a, as, as Lord Knight said, if, if you don't beat Guilty Gear, Guilty Gear will beat you. Yeah, Guilty Gear right. is a special game because in this current iteration, there are a lot of things I don't like. Right? I'm not going to talk about the things I don't like, I just wanted to say that because I know a lot of people, if anyone does hear, hear this who plays Guilty Gear and they know me from it, they know I'm not too big of a fan of his current iteration, which is Rev 2. But when I got into the game, which was Rev 1, I really, 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 really enjoyed the game because it's drastically better than a lot of uh, mainstream games that were out at the time. And I really enjoy it. I think it's a great game. I think the system's amazing. I think that Guilty Gear, if you can get good at Guilty Gear, you can and get through all of the 
the, the quote unquote BS that's in Guilty Gear and maintain yeah. a steady, a steady, consistent tournament record in Guilty Gear, I feel like you can you will have the tools to be good in virtually any game. It does t- if you I'm talking about if you are some of the stronger players. There's a mid level group of players in Guilty Gear who only really know how to play Guilty Gear because you know that's what they learn. Um, and and those they learn that style of play and it doesn't really transfer over. Right. But at the highest level of Guilty Gear, those guys are incredibly strong fighting game players, some of the best. So getting to play them and, and compete against them was very, very, very good for me. And learning that game helped shape me into the player that I am right now and the player that I'm very happy to be. I really do think that the play style and the thought process that I inherited from playing Guilty Gear has transferred over nicely into the other games I play. So, yeah. great game. Yeah, yeah, because I definitely um, agree with that because I've been learning Guilty Gear on the side. So, I can kind of like see like how like Guilty Gear can beat you, but like having that like patience about it and like taking your time with it's been huge. So you so you played Guilty Gear and then you moved into Dragon Ball. Moved into Dragon Ball, yes. Oh man. So yes. tell the people a little bit about that and how that was going. So Dragon Ball Fighters, I was actually in a Discord call with Otashi, who recently won, uh, I believe it's Anime Ascension. Good job, mm-hmm. shout out to Otashi. Yeah, I was in a yeah. Discord call with Otashi because we call each other randomly. We were watching E3. I believe a Dragon Ball got announced. Eight. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I, we were watching it, and Dragon Ball comes out. Yeah. He goes, no, there's no way. And I'm like, yes, yes, there is. So Dragon Ball, and it's a 3v3 game. It's everything we've been missing from the FTC since Marvel Infinite's un, un, unfortunate, fortunate departure um, from Evo uh, and its lack of a world tour. Um, it was everything we've been missing, and it was Dragon Ball characters. So I'm incredibly hyped for the game. Uh, from I knew I was going to play it when I saw it. I actually said that Dra- Dragon Ball is going to be the last fighting game that I played seriously. So I really wanted to go very hard at it because, you know, I even though I didn't play Tekken or KOF or Street Fighter seriously or Marvel 3, yeah. meaning go to tournaments, I still invested a lot of time into watching and training and stuff like that. And, you know, it's coming, for me, it comes a time where you have to, you have to be, you have to, be mature about how you use your time. And I didn't want to be putting all my time into fighting games without getting a sizable return. Right. You that want to get something said, out of this if you're pouring so much of your time, your effort, everything into it. Exactly. Exactly. So that being said, when Dragon Ball came out, I was like, hey, yo, forget that. We got to play Dragon Ball because this is a Dragon Ball fighting game. Um, I can't believe this is happening. It's 3v3. It's amazing. It has assists. As, and then I saw Black, and I was like, he looks freaking cool. I heard his accent, and I was like, that's whack, but I'm still playing him, <laughs> you know? So I was really, really excited for that game. So, yeah, that's initial reaction for Dragon Ball. Really, really hype. I got hands on the game. I actually got sick during the beta, so I got – I actually was lucky. I got multiple beta codes. I got four or five codes, and Damn. I gave them away. Okay. Yeah, I gave them away because I got a bit sick during that time. I wasn't able to play. But after that, uh, Dragon Ball comes out, and it's really hype. And none of us know how to play. And you know, I'm getting beat by players I've never lost to in any other games. And I'm like, I felt that feeling of of, uh, of humbling. Humbling mm-hmm. and a, a drive to get stronger. So really, I was really, really excited for, for Dragon Ball and the competition and all the scenes converging. We got the MK players, the Marvel players, the Street Fighter players, all yep. playing with the Skullgirl players, the Marvel 2 players, the CVS 2 players, the Guilty Gear, the Blaze Blue. Everyone's all together. So it was really an exciting, it really, really exciting. Yeah. Uh, and you've been playing Goku Black since the beginning. So that is a, like a testament to like <laughs> the grind, right? I, I um, when I, I saw Black, I knew I was going to play him because Black's my favorite character in Shonen. I really like Black and Zamasu. Even though, of course, Super wasn't the greatest thing, Dragon Ball is the reason. It's it's a big part of the reason why I am the person that I am. And I 
I actually learned a lot of like values, you know, in elementary school, coming home, watching Tsunami, watching Goku train. And I'm like, man, is that what training gets you? Or is that what being dedicated gets you? So it taught me a couple of things too. Playing that character, being able to play my favorite character in anime and a fighting game in a 3v3 fighting game, which is how I got my original start in fighting games. It's just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Initially seeing Sonic do so well with him and we all believing he was really, really, really strong. It was very exciting for me and I knew I wanted to play that character. But I, I, I always saw him as more of an assist role, not the point role that Sonic saw him in. So yeah, despite everything, I really like the beam assist. I really, really like him. And for right now, I've said I'm going to play Yamcha like 45 times now. But right now, the play style that he incorporates into, well, the, the play style that he allows me to incorporate into my, my game plan with my other two characters is just something I don't want to give up right now. I feel so, that. On top of me, I do believe he's better than I um, think. I say he's trash, and then I turn around and I, I'll come back on someone with just him. I'm like, he can't be that bad. You know, uh, so yeah, it's it's, it's that it's that kind of back and forth. Uh, I also picked up Goku Black at launch, and I played him for a really long time, and I kept changing my team, and I would I was I kept every time I kept Goku Black, but I I got to admit I cracked, I cracked after enough time. I and I had and I did. Wolf? Did you pick the wolf? No, no, no I Super Saiyan Vegeta. Oh, okay, okay. You picked the BF. You didn't I, pick the wolf. Yeah, I, I did. It, I mean, it was it was tough because like I loved I loved Goku Black as a character because he's hype. I'm wearing. I don't know I, if you you see saw Kami, but I'm wearing a Goku Black hoodie right now. I yeah. Like, look at this man's hair right here. Like, it's the power of a god, right? Like, <laughs> you can't you can't not love this character. Um, but it just it seemed like he always had such a hard time really finding his foot in the meta. Especially as Super Saiyan Goku got more developed. Yes. Because yes. I, I remember every top player I talked to, I would tell them my team and they'd be like, But what if you just picked up Super Saiyan Goku though? And I would and I would be like, nah 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 nah. And then I didn't end up picking any Goku by the end of it. But I mean it's so tough. And I mean it's really incredible how you have become synonymous with the character at this point. <laughs> like when, when literally when people were like, Oh yeah, Goku Black, I immediately think of you. Like, no no questions asked. And I mean, that's honestly incredible that you've just become so synonymous with this one character. I mean, and I think your passion for said character just kind of shines through because you remain loyal when no one else did. Like, and that's 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 a mark right there. Well, I I, I that you know, I wouldn't say I was loyal the entire time because I did drop him completely at NEC. That is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, um, I really believed in Zamasu and, and Black and Zamasu are the same person. So it's kind of like I'm saying the same, playing the same person anyway. Yeah. But I just really, I feel like if you can't, so two things, right? If you're playing a fighting game for money or you're doing any, any competitive venture, when you pick, when you play Apex Legends. Yes. You're not going to, you even if you like the name Mozambique, you think it's a funny name, right? You think it's cool. You like the way the gun looks. You like the skin they got for it. If you have a Mozambique and a wingman in front of you, you're going to pick the better gun, which is the wingman. 100% of the time. Yep. Because you want to win. In fighting games, we get kind of jaded. And we love these characters so much because they, they represent something that we a part of us. So they represent a, a... Excuse me. They represent a portion of our our psyche somehow and we continue to play these characters that are weak despite them being weak where whereas if you are a general manager for a basketball team you're taking the five best players you can football team same thing baseball team same thing it's just that's an odd thing that happens in fighting me so yeah. when people telling me to drop black because he's bad believe me i completely understand that more than anyone more than anyone However, I do believe that the character is stronger than people think. And I do believe that the character allows you to play a way that is some... It, it, he allows you to play a way that may not be as strong as SSJ Goku's game plan. Okay. But it has its own merits. You know, being able to teleport in on someone at any time 
being able to full screen god slicer and make someone block being that's the type of play style i want to have in a character on my team generally i'm a very defensive player anyone who's played me in tekken or guilty gear will tell you that possibly too defensive in those games yeah so having a character like black on my team who can safely go on offense is just a very very important thing for me because it kind of covers the hole that i can have as a player occasionally what i really mean? really do believe that he's stronger than people give him credit for though yeah I, even let's say he is bottom five okay if he's bottom let's say he is if he's bottom five it's a darn good bottom five character right because while he is weak as an anchor, he has strengths. You know, Kazunoko once said when he was asked about why he doesn't play Cell, when the entire world was playing Cell, including myself, he said that he doesn't play Cell because you are forced to play in a very defensive manner with Cell because of his neutral tools. Mm. And I feel the same way about SSJ Goku. Like, you're not going to see someone rushing chasing someone down, rushing them down with SSJ Goku. Why? Because yeah. his rush down tools aren't that good. I want a character who can put people on that on their back foot and make them think about what they're doing a bit more. Uh, rather than playing SSJ Goku and having someone come in and say, how am I going to get in on this person? I want the person to think, how am I going to stop this guy from enforcing his will on, on me? And I think that Black does a phenomenal job at that. So that is why I would play a character. And I continue to play him instead of SSJ Goku. Yeah. While he th has weak tools yeah. as a single character, right. he has the tools to make opponents uncomfortable. And for me as a player, at least right now, that's what I need. Now, Kami, no Kami tomorrow. Might look at past no Kami after he gets bodied by Yamcha and say, hey, man, you got to pick up man's best friend. Pick him up. But... <laughs> Me right now, I'm very happy with the decision that I'm making. And I do understand that he's a weaker character. But I'm not one of those people that play. I don't like him that much, guys. If I didn't think he was good, believe me, I wouldn't play him. I like 17 a lot, too. You don't see me playing that. Yeah, much. I mean, I think that would be definitely a, a bridge too far. And I think you make <laughs> an excellent point. And the kind of the way you're describing the character... Because uh, I think a lot of people get really caught up in the individual weaknesses, but it seems like in your case, you're seeing the character as being more than the sum of his parts. Like, right, even yeah, though yeah. he's not incredible in every way, he's one of the only characters who does all of these particular things in some capacity. Right. Right, right. and then acts acts kind of as that glue. Um, I, now, I gotta ask, what do, you, what do you think has really kept Goku Black from kind of stepping up in the meta as a more powerful character is it the, a lot of people point to the lack of a 2l is that the only thing is there like a, a small wish list you have for the character I, I definitely want to hear more about your thoughts on this i agree with that well honestly the thing about black is first of all if you were to give him a 2l he instantly becomes top three or top five and he's instantly on everyone's team because the only thing stopping his a lot of his degenerate mix-up capabilities is black of a 2L and I don't I believe people say they want black to have a 2L but if you were to get that it's not going to be like Nappa where it's not going to really matter with black you're going to see nothing but Goku black players constantly because really he, so you think he'd be that meta defining if he was given a 2L yes I think he'd be incredibly strong just like if, if Frieza gets a J2H he'll be very very strong as well oh yeah um, I see that but I th the thing about so I don't think he needs a two L. Okay. I think that would be too much and just not not good, not healthy for the game. I would like for the, what he the issue with him as opposed to Goku is for the longest time is that Goku had double super. He does a lot more damage in sparking, which is when the characters are used. Right. And Goku's level three has been considered better and is better, especially now. For a long part of the time, he also has slight knockdown. Goku has key blasts. You know, mm -hmm. Black doesn't have um, he doesn't have spammable key blasts like Goku does. So Goku essentially fills Cell's role on many people's teams without them playing Cell, who has subpar neutral, whereas Goku has great neutral, and he has the thing that Cell doesn't have, which is a horizontal key blast. Now with Black versus Goku. I, I believe that, like I said, the level three, the key blasts matter. 
Yep. However, I think mm-hmm. one of the other big parts has been the DHC. Mm-hmm. His DHC is pretty bad. Pretty bad. And it's better now. It's much I don't have a problem with it now. But people who play characters like Team Go like a Team Gohan or a Cell. I played Cell Black for a long time. You never get the full hits of Black's mm-hmm. DHC with Cell or or Team Gohan or Gotenks. Like you'll never see a Gotenks Goku Black. Because the, the DHC just doesn't work. So I think that is a big part of why people have been playing Goku. In the past meta, Goku can double super. Black couldn't double super, which is also very important. I would say now they're much closer than they used to be because the double super change has been nerfed and Black's DHC has been buffed. But because of the things I mentioned, I still think... I actually had a long talk with one of my good friends today about Black and Goku. And I was arguing that Black is better... And he was like, dude, Goku has a freaking key blast. And I was like, yeah, you're kind of right. So Yeah, that's an angle I hadn't really hadn't really considered with him. It's just, yeah, something as simple as just having access to that. I mean, yeah. combo extension. Aside, like, Well, you know, Cell, the reason why Cell isn't played is because if Cell, the, the one thing stopping Cell from, from being really, 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 really strong is... His neutral is very committal. If you do something with Cell, you better hope it hit it hits or is blocked because if not, you're gonna get punished. Yeah. Now, when Cell's when Cell's in on you, it's great. But when he's not, he doesn't really have tools to stop people from rushing him down. And Key Blast does that. A person has to worry about a Key Blast when they're attempting to rush you down because it can stop them. Or they have to super dash it. They have to do something or block. They have to jump, whatever. Goku has that, and it's really good. You also use Key Blast to bait Reflex, which Black cannot do. So yeah. that's a, a big part of why people consider Goku better. As well, and, and it's why I think he's he's better. That in the level three is just he also has solo snap. Black doesn't have solo snap. Uh, things that Black probably should get, they should buff his command grab. Um, people, a lot of people say Black doesn't need buffs, but Anytime a character has a move that is unusable, it's unusable. You know, you yeah. use Superman grab, you get punished 95% of the time. You know, people, I, I, when I play against other um, black players, they will whiff, they, they will do the command grab. I, I can visibly confirm the it that is not a beam and still jump and punish. And that's just too slow. I think they should make it the same frame as Goku, um, base Goku's, make it 23 frames, okay. leave the damage on it very low, leave it very low, because the one thing stopping him from being too strong is lack of a mix-up. So if you're going to give him a mix-up, they need to make it, they need to leave it so he can't combo off it, and they also need to make it uh, remain a um, very scaled starter. Right now, the most damage you can do at one bar from the I mean, with the vanish is like 2k maybe 22 I-, I would say keep it very low you know one bar getting 2k that's not good anyone will tell you that's not good yeah but he doesn't need he doesn't need a strong mix up he the, the, having a mix up is fine getting a high reward from a mix up is not okay and i don't think he needs that exactly. so yeah. i think that maybe make his uh medium dive kick make it so he can solo snap in the corner um or Ooh, okay that's a good point or, or they could make um they need to make instant transmission faster i like four frames no no not even four like three frames three frames is fine make okay. it just a bit faster not whereas fast. he's not going to get stupid mix-ups from it but the startup it will it will be something people have to worry about when blocking so mm-hmm. i definitely feel that okay so you kind of touched on like how um black is in this current meta um, how do you feeling about season two? Um, you're probably one of, uh, along with a few other players, uh, you're probably one of the more people that kind of was like, on the fence. He's like, I don't know how I feel about season two yet, and like you had to do a lot of testing on it. Um, how do you feel currently, uh, especially going into this weekend with final round? Um, how do you feel about season two and where the game is progressing? I actually like season two. I think season two. I don't like. Well, let's talk about what I don't like. Okay. The main thing I don't like is the level three meter nerf. I think it's too long. I think the the meter cooldown is just too long on level threes. They should they should 
I release your meter cooldown by about three real world seconds. For right now, it's just too long. It's ridiculous. Um, the other thing that I am pretty, pretty not a fan of is the double super change. Mm-hmm. I think that I understand that the level three change is meant to supplement that, but I think double super is just added for a, a, a cool factor element to a lot of the teams. And it, it was really interesting to look at that from a team building standpoint. Right. And... Which characters can enable my double supers? Like exactly. Yeah. Like that. exactly. There's only a handful that can do it. And right now they can, you know, lowering the damage would be fine if they wanted to go that route, maybe lower it by 50% or lower it by, by 60 percent 40 40 50 percent fine right. but the way the double supers are right now it's just it's just you it's unjustifiable to go for a double super and i think that's uh it hurts creativity in the game and that's what a lot of people think dragon ball is lacking yeah. that's creativity. 300 right? so. extra damage for an entire second super it's just it's not, it's not worth it like at all yeah no. so i really don't like those things but those are pretty much the things, the only things I dislike. I do, I was expecting them to hit raw tags. I'm not a fan of raw tag. I think it's one of the worst parts of Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, I was expecting them to touch that. Super Dash, I'm more or less fine with. I open, Of course, it's, it could be a less uh, ignorant way, uh, system mechanic, allowing, you know, for less strenuous situations, but it is what it is. Raw tag, however, I think no one likes the way raw tag is. And yeah. I would really, I I would agree really hope, I would really hope for them to change that. Mm. I want them to standardize it. I I really dislike when I read a raw tag, and I guess because I'm a little bit too close to one side of the screen versus the other, they come from the opposite direction, and I get basically crossed up, crossed up by yes. by a raw tag, and it's like, what was I supposed to do there? I had the right read with the two H. And I get punished for it. Yeah. Yeah, even... I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, that's how I feel. It's even with just Super Dash in general, too. Like, you can be neutral. Like, someone could be neutral jumping. And then, like, you cross yourself up because of the Super Dash. So, it's just, like, kind of that same same vein. So. Yeah. I, I agree with you guys on that. I would like those things to possibly be changed. But for me, I'm not a guy who likes I'm not going to complain if I'm playing the game, I think it. I do think it's when, you, especially when you're playing good characters. I think it's a much better um, game overall than a lot of what we have out right now. So right. for me, yeah. I'm okay with it. That being said, things I like. At first, I thought I would dislike the guard cancel change, but I actually really like it. I think that guard cancel needs to be good. I think yeah. that hundred um, percent. There are a lot of really oppressive things that. Or and a lot of degenerate mix-ups that were just a bit too strong. Um, I do think there should be more ways to bait it mid-screen. Well, in the corner, I think there should be more ways to bait it, um, and I think they're going to address that. Or, I, but I really just think that for what it is, it's fine. At first, I was just really against it because I felt like it was going to be like Street Fighter Five, where you're constantly guessing on offense, and you kind of are. However, with assists, you can really supplement that, and you can build strings to to really try, at least cut off um, guard cancel. The uh, meter change was good. I think meter should have a cooldown after using it, uh, especially with how people are using Bardock EX Lariat right now. It's just ridiculous, and if that, they were still able to yeah. use that. Yeah, if they were still able to use that without a meter penalty, it'd just be a big problem. Um, same with, like, there are a lot of characters that have moves that are EX that were used more frequently than they are now, and for good reason. I think the EX move destroying Blue Life is amazing. I think it's great, and people haven't implemented that into their game yet. I think more people should implement that. Um, what else? Blue. There was something. There's another big change. Oh, Blue Life regen in general. It's a. It's much better. It's more akin to Marvel Three now how yeah. fast the blue life comes back and how much you get. I think that's a great thing. I also think that the um, the change to level ones, le- those level one supers like Piccolo and Gotenks, getting as much of a meter cooldown that they do is good. 
I think sparking is better uh, better as a defensive tool now. I think it's, mm-hmm. you should have always been able to spark on block. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. So it's just yeah, it's just great. I really like what they've done to sparking. I dislike um, the idea of sparking. You know, losing and getting quote unquote rewarded for losing, getting a superpower character. But I think they are you know trying to balance that the best way they can. So. Yeah, I yeah. think season two is better overall. I, I really yes. do I like what they've done. You know, level threes were very oppressive. Snap, Snap, Hellzone was very oppressive. All uh, Gotenks Ghost was just very oppressive. And those things are, when you think about them in a the vacuum, and you think about uh, what the viewer experiences, not just the player experience, but having a Gotenks just, you know, loop Ghost or having a Piccolo loop Hellzone or having it. Even far back, an adult Gohan player do an infinite block string. Oh so, man, yeah, those were those, those were the days. Were the, they those had were the fun days for me. Seven yeah. seven meter adult Gohans where they would just sit there and they'd be like, "Oh, ex legs, ex legs," and it was plus plus twenty plus seventeen. It was ridiculous. I don't know why it was plus seventeen. It didn't need to be. It never needed to be plus seventeen. That was absurd. I agree. It's absurdity yeah, at its finest. It was a big yeah, problem. Yeah. So I, I'm happy that uh, they made the adjustments that they've ma- made. I just think that raw tag is in, is incredibly degenerate and has no place in the game the way it is. So hopefully, you know, they they do something with that. But if they don't, it is what it is. So uh, right now, the state of the game is I, I would say it's better than season one. Uh, they fixed a lot. They have addressed a lot of complaints. Yeah. I'm really happy about that. That's awesome. So, uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to ask. Um, do you, so some people have criticized Bandai Namco saying that they are overpatching the game and that they aren't letting things develop enough. This is, this, I, these are, these are critiques that have been launched, you know, in the wake of season two. Mm-hmm. And, do you how do you feel about this? Do you think Bandai Namco has taken an appropriate amount of, you know, tweaks and things like that? Should they let things ride a little bit longer? I just kind of wanted to hear some of your thoughts on that. As somebody who's living at that kind of top level of gameplay, uh other pros haven't been as big a fan of the types and the amount of patches that we've gotten and I was curious what you had to say about that. Well, uh I haven't heard too much of that actually. People um from pe- the people I know, yeah, um, telling yeah, me that do. saying that the the we're being patched too frequently, uh, but I know that's a thing that exists. I know that is a complaint that could possibly exist, and I would say that I think that the things they have patched have been necessary. Uh, okay, I think that having literal three hours of Bardock level threes and top of the Evo was a just a r- ridiculous ridiculous thing to have and i yeah. and i don't you, you don't want your game becoming a meme okay kof 14 mm. is not a terrible fight many people bought kof 14 upon release myself included however nakaruru and k dash were incredibly broken for a number of months when the game released Nakaruru had a, I believe it was a invincible walk, uh, bird clean, and just ridiculous K dash build meter when he did Iron Trigger, which is unheard of in a KOF game. And the game became a meme. People would, you know, do because of the bird, they would do bird emotes and stuff in Twitch chat. And anytime you heard about KOF 14, someone said something bad about the visuals. And when someone defended the visuals, they would say, well, the game's a meme anyway because of the bird. Right. So people stopped. <laughs> They stop playing KOF 14, even though it's not it is not the worst game ever. Um, a lot of people stop playing, and I feel like if especially if Adult Gohan stayed the way he was, I think the game would have become a meme and, and no one would have played it. I, um, so I think that yeah. patch was necessary. I also think the Bardock patch was very necessary. People were very, even though the the nerf they gave to him didn't really matter after Evo. This more more recent one. With this, the level three nerfs to him in sixteen, they matter a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. I think they're just they're necessary. I believe that these things need to happen in these sorts of games. Now they didn't. It's not like Injustice where the game has been patched five times in one year. Right. Um, I don't. So I do think even Injustice maybe it was four, not five, but 
I do think the the changes they've given, you know, even look at this year, I still don't believe we've gotten a character patch this year. Yeah, we have Only not this. we've not had character uh, adjustments as of season two. And we are on we are rounding out almost a fourth of the year done. And we probably won't get those character uh uh that character patch until the second wave of DLC. So um that will probably be in the middle of the year, you know, April, May, June. Right. So having, and that will most likely be one of the possibly two patches that we get this year. So I think having two patches a year, um, two and maybe three, if something's really degenerate and needs to go is a fine number. I don't think the patch it's re is relatively the same exact game it's been, and they haven't drastically changed any of the system like super dash or raw tag or reflect they haven't changed those things drastically and those are the things that are used the most by every player so i i think that this in this game in particular it's been patched a reasonable amount of time i want to patch right now for the game because i want them to buff black but... <laughs> well that's an emergency one they got to get that one through, through yeah. ASAP. Like, oh god black black oh no we gotta we gotta buff him right yeah. So, leaderless snap. So I so I, I a funny story. Um so I I was on Twitter. This was this was after season two came out. And I remember you posted the Twitter video where you did Goku Black level three and then you did the teleport to try to get mid stage Oki. And and I remember you just you just kind of giving up, right? <laughs> And it was really funny because literally that I, I, I went to play net play like 30 minutes after that. And I played against a Goku black and he did the, he did the level three and I blocked the, the teleport the first time. And then the second teleport, I was like, Oh yeah, I remember what Nokami did. I just backdashed and he just stopped playing. He just, he just gave up. Me. He didn't know what to do. That might've been me. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably me. That's really funny. I, I that that was a dark time for me. You know what the funny thing about that was when that happened. Uh, I'm crying and I'm all sad and and being very hysterical. And I get back in my chair and the first thing I do is I look at the Twitch chat. Oh and no! When I look at the chat, the the thing they just keep repeating is this pain will make you stronger. And I'm like, <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Twitch chat hold you down, dude. There you it go. It was amazing. I, I I couldn't believe what a clever thing. I was like, I should have thought of that, you know? So the funny that I think the nerf was worth that moment. <laughs> the pain will make you stronger. It was really funny. I hundred percent agree with that. Um damn. That's that's crazy to think about. And plus your I've been in your stream chat a lot. Um just kinda like watching you play it from time to time and like your community is very like close. Yeah. Like, homes. like yeah. all jokes aside, like there's a lot of people like a lot of discussions that you have on uh, your Twitch uh, stream from time to time, and like I really do appreciate like you like talking to some people and like calling some people out. I'm not gonna name names uh, on social media uh, about Android 17, so we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> you know, uh, would want to. I, I really want to see the. I want to actually have that set happen. No, no lie. Uh, yeah, man. But, Same here. Uh, <laughs> um, so you've been chilling, you've been grinding, you're kind of like one of the, you know, like one, um, like kind of like on top of like the scene at this point, like one of like one of the kingpins of America, like. I wouldn't, call, I wouldn't say that. I would I, say, well, 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 okay. Final round, we'll you've say. got a, you've got a PGRZ rating. I mean, what more could you ask for? like it ha actually me and jay were talking like before the show and he was like dude this thing hasn't been updated since like evo i'm like exactly oh my god exactly. you That's guys can it. probably expect that coming relatively soon i, I, I was gonna say <laughs> i'm looking forward to it because the only rankings the the most recent power rankings that have been done are the srk rankings so i, I didn't know those still existed no, they they still do for Dragon Ball. So I mean, that was the most recent thing that's been updated because PGR hasn't been updated since Evo. Right. Yeah, they're definitely. Uh, I would imagine they would update that three in at least in a month or two. Expected. I'm gonna be honest. I don't pay too much attention to those things because right. when you think about it, unless you're unless you're number number one, you know, 
all it's saying is that you're your second, third, fourth, fifth, seven, eighth, ninth to the number one person. So you so you don't believe in the people who say like I'm I'm number twenty three. That doesn't mean anything. No. I mean it it it's definitely a good margin. It's a good okay. margin for people. But for me personally, it doesn't matter to me because a lot of things can happen for you to get that twenty three or that eleven in my case. Um, I can have a good pool. I can beat a person who I don't usually beat. I can random them out. I can play a character no one knows how to fight and get there. I can I can win one tournament that's counted really highly with no one there. Things like that. I can I can there are ton, just tons of different uh, factors when you think of that. And while I do believe it's a great good margin, those dudes do a good job yeah. at the PGRZ um, staff. I think it's a great margin. However, personally, I don't think of it too much because one day you can have someone saying they people saying someone deserves their rating. The next day they don't deserve it. Yada yada yada. So it's just not that big of a beef. It's not something that. I want to concern myself with constantly. Right. You don't want to. It's you don't nice. want to spend time and effort on that. No, not at all. It's yeah. nice for seeding, but I, I, the, I'm focused on being the best player I can be, and not being the best player that, um, the not being the best player in a vacuum. Like I don't want to be the best player at this highly ranked tournament one time, and then not do well the entire time. So right. I look at my ranking and I say. Hey, you know, it's great that they gave me that, but I need to continue to improve myself. Let's keep so, pushing. Kind yeah. Of. And yeah. Cause I remember when we actually, we met at ECT and you were in my room and like, I was talking about it and there were and like, I think it was like, who was in the room? It was you, Yahosi was in the room. I good think. Good friend of mine. Nakiel. Another good friend of mine. And then, uh, Nico Maggi, AKA Jace, who I found out listens to the podcast from time to time he watched the um episode when we had sage from jersey that's um, pretty cool talked about trunks so like it was interesting like to like see like how like these players are kind of like it's like a fact checker and it's like hey you're doing this like and just kind of keep it going so i really do like that point that you brought up about pgr it's kind of like not the end of the world i know like a lot of people in smash would say it's like huge because it helps with the seating yeah, but, yes. seeding is very, very important in Smash. Yeah. Um, but they, their their algorithm and their ranking system has also, they've been doing it a lot longer. So, yeah, they're just a little bit more yeah. advanced than ours is. I yeah. So, I, 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 like I said, I think it matters. But for me personally, just because I'm 11th on the PGRC does not mean I'm the 11th best player in the world. It doesn't mean I'm not the best player in the world. It, right. it just... It's a number. It's, it's a, a number. it's a number, and it's a number that can not you you can't put too much into that number, because if you look at me right now with my current placements, I would say that I shouldn't be eleventh right now. I should be lower. Uh, however, I still am. Now you know a, a different placement at whatever tournament that comes forth next next like final round or comma break or whatever. Yeah, a different tournament uh, or a really high placement or a win. And then I'm gonna say I should be higher. I should be like right. seventh or something. So it's it's a static. The thing is, it's a static number. It's not a a a, a number that updates very frequently. So right. you can't put too much into that. I mean, maybe at the time that they do it, you can put a lot of stock into it. But that that's like seven months old. Yeah, that's so it's ancient it's, at this it's, point. It's ancient yeah. news. So. Um. Jed, you got anything you want to point out? I, well, actually, uh, one of the big things that we do on here, Kami, is uh, we cater very heavily to a lot of mid-tier players, a lot of up-and-coming people. People like Flo, people like myself, who are, like, you know, kind of moving up through the team. The people who, you know, are finishing anywhere from, like, 49th to, like, 17th. Those guys, right? Where you're where you're not the big fish yet, but you're 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 making progress and trying to make your way to the top. And a big thing that we, you know, we like we like to talk about, we like to highlight uh, with our guests is what helped you make the transition as a player to try to push yourself to that level where you're eight moving towards the highest level of competition. What helped you get beyond sort of that, you know, mid tier to upper mid tier play 
to be coming, you know, in that spoken of in that upper echelon? Uh, I think the first thing is developing a play style that you're comfortable with. Uh, there are many different ways you can play Dragon Ball. We all have to play around Super Dash, though. So finding a play style that deals with that effectively and in a way that fits you as a player is very important, plays to your strengths. I think that is the number one thing that you should do. Secondly, finding a team and sticking with it. You need to stick with the team. Most, most, you should most likely be playing strong characters, but regardless of that, you have to pick, stick with a team. People have been saying Femrich's team is not strong for months, myself included. It is a strong team, but not, not one of the strong. You don't think Femrich's team when you think top three teams or anything. Right. Um, he performed extremely well at LCQs, and he went on to get second in the top eight at World Tour. So I... You know, is his team great? Do I believe it's great now? No, but he stuck with it and he knows tons of situations with it. So despite me or whoever, whoever, let's not even say me, let's say someone who considers himself a better player than Ferris, if he's been playing the team for 12 months and you're a 10, 10 out of 10 player, he's a 9 out of 10 player in your eyes, he's been playing his team for a year, literally, you pick up your team in a week, then you're most likely going to lose, despite it being the stronger team, because he's played that team for such a long time. So I think that's a very important. Uh, I would also say that people need to get out of this loop of playing low tier characters. If you're playing a low tier character, or especially two, I and you're expecting to win in a game that is as volatile as this one. This is not third strike. This is not Tekken. This is not KOF. You're not going to always beat someone because you're the better player. Femrich uh, did really, 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 really great things against Kazunoko when they played. And Kazunoko's team, along with him being strong, but Kazunoko's team and the strength of it was really the thing that pulled him out um, and got him that W. And he he acknowledges this, not saying he's not strong, but um, the team is also very strong, and he's the strongest with it. So you need to play strong characters. If you're playing, like I said before, if you're doing anything for money and you're not using the strongest tool, essentially we have a, a, a group of people that are, are playing with swords, right? We, we all have swords. Right. We're all fighting with swords. And you walk into, a, into, into the, the tournament with a knife. And we have swords. And our swords have guns on them. <laughs> What? What is this? Wait. Gears of War? Do I have do I have what? chainsaws on my guns too? And our, our and our swords have grenade launchers on the bottom of the. You can attach a grenade launcher to the gun on your sword, and you still have a knife. So you can be really good with that knife, and you're gonna you're gonna get some people, but then they got some guys gonna hit you with a grenade and die. So I think it's very important to play. The best thing possible that suits your playstyle. For me right now, Yamcha doesn't suit my playstyle. He's unarguably the best anchor in the game right now, and I'm not playing him. Not because I want to play a little two character, just because it doesn't fit my playstyle. But I do know that Yamcha is the best, and I'm not putting myself in the best position to win that I possibly could. And I think that you should always, all especially in games like this. You know, Kuma's. Kuma won Tekken World Tour. Bears are not high tier Tekken. They're not. But he knew this he game, knew the bear inside and out though. He exactly. But and but this game is not Tekken. If mm-hmm. you go to a tournament with seventeen base Goku and Goku Blue, you're not making top eight. It's not going. If if the top if the strongest players are there, you're not going to make top eight. Um, not in a game like this. So. Uh, Nappa, it's a lot of teams you could take, huh? Nappa, Blue Vegeta, Broly. Try that team. Try and top eight that team. There's a lot. There's a lot of teams. While people are playing, while you have 17 people playing Team Kazunoko, it's going to be rough. So despite how good you are, just because of the strength of that, I would also say that people should have dedicated training partners. You need people to play with that are on your team, meaning you need people to play with who aren't just there to beat you, you know? Um. A lot of what happens in a lot of scenes are you get one or two really strong players and they get strong and they start playing the scene and 
the, the scene stops playing or, or they fold or they become really abrasive to the, that said player yeah. because they're stronger. And you need you don't need people like that as your training partner. You need people who are committed to you getting better, committed to themselves getting better, and committed to being competitors, yet also being there for you when you need them to be, um, when you need them to not be uh, just a, like not be the guy that you're trying to be. So because right. you need to be able to share tech with people, you need to be able to try things. And if I can't try something because I feel like uh, I feel like some sort of way that's not that's not a good training partner. So you need to you need to play as many people as possible. I for one think that online, while it's not the greatest, I use it probably more than anyone. I'm constantly playing because I think it's a great representation of what you're going to see in pools for many tournaments. Really? So I think online is really important. And I would also say, you know, just continue to to work on fundamentals. Dragon Ball is a game that that can sometimes not encourage strong fundamentals because of Super Dash and Raw Tag. Right. However, if you look at the best players, Kazunoko, Femrich, Sonic Fox, you look at the best players, they have incredible fundamentals. So despite the game not necessarily encouraging it, it's still there, and it still is what's going to win you the games that you need the most. So I would say really go back to the roots and, and look at things like that because... If these guys have been able to make it work and are decorated champions across many games, then you can also make it work and you can also have a ton of success. So I would say those are the main things. Play top tier characters. Play, play, but don't just play them. Play, you playing top tier characters, but you play them not because they're top tier, but to give you, put yourself in the best position to win. Because you get a lot of people who are just going to play top tier and then they're going to lose and they're going to lose and they're going to lose because they might not be a good player. But if you're a good player and you're playing 17 blue blue Ku base Vegeta, yeah. And you and you're a good player, but you're playing a player who's a mediocre player, but he's playing Gotenks, Ado Gohan Yamcha, he's putting himself he's giving himself that many more chances to win. So, whereas if you were playing the same team, you're winning 10 out of 10 games, but you playing your base Vegeta team, you're winning 5 out of 10 games. Right. So, I would say play top two characters Put yourself around people who really care about you and, and really focus on building your local scene and and, um, and having dedicated training partners. Play online if you don't have a really strong offline scene and continue to, to, to work on your fundamentals because those are the things that are going to win the game. Also, lab and watch, watch replays, videos of the game. No one I know that has ever won anything has not watch their competition at least some um and prepare for it or watch what beat them before you know a football team doesn't lose in the super bowl and 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 not look at what beat them because it's this if they play the same team the same thing is going to beat them exactly the same way so you need to just familiarize yourself with those types of things. i would say that's it though that's, yeah. that's pretty much it. i yeah, I agree with that. Um, I remember uh, you came to my uh, stream, what was it, like, a couple days ago? And then we literally played, like, I said well, last game for, like, a good... Oh, I probably didn't hear you. <laughs> nah, it's cool. I said last game, like, five times, and we a- ended up just, like, grinding out. And, like, you're one of the few people that I can come to, and, like, I can really, like, look back at those games and ask you questions about it and not feel like I'm, like... Budgie, like bugging you or doing that kind of thing. So I feel like having like a couple people like that in in your in your little circle of people um is definitely a big thing to have. Um, also, guys, if you guys have any questions in chat, um, please let us know. Um, near the end of the show, we're gonna try to do a little Q and A uh, if we have time. Um, I've been seeing some people in the chat. Shout out to Yinja, who we had on. I see Strife DD, see Kai, see all you guys. So. Uh, thank you so much for watching today. You guys have been killing it. All right. There's actually so. two points I, I want to get to because I actually think you dropped a lot of really, really good stuff there, Kami. Um, two, two of those that I, re- I really want to talk about, though. Um, definitely the scene thing where a lot of scenes get into this situation where it, it gets stratified really quickly, where one or two players end up so far out in front. And every and everyone just gets so focused on beating that one person rather than improving, and I've yep. definitely seen a lot of scenes fall into this trap, 
where it's like, I got to beat this guy. I got to beat this guy. It's got to be this guy. It's like, you got to bring up your own level of play. It's, it's mm-hmm. not just about, I need to beat this guy. It's what are, what are the weaknesses in your own play? Not just beating that one particular person. I agree with you hundred percent. I think it's a very important thing that, uh, I, I think it's kind of a, a thing I, I immature is not the word, but there's a way for it. There's, there's just that thought process. It's a, it's a thought process that has failed a lot because you'll get people that say, you know what? I got to beat Sonic. I have to beat him. I'm going to study, study all his games constantly, study all his games constantly. And then, um, that same person will lose to Kazunoko in pools. Right. And, you know, you or lose to random person in pools. And you're like, man, man, I focused all my time on Sonic Fox or I focused all my time preparing for Christy and I wasn't prepared for what's in front of me. Uh, and even then, I, I was solely prepared with my group or whoever preparing for this person in my state. Yep. Whereas when I go to international tournaments, there are many out of state people who you are not prepared for, who are going to be just as strong, if not better, than the person that you are playing. So if you've only, let's say you looked at Kami play, and you looked at me play, and you're like, man, Kami does this a lot. I'm going to do this, and he does this. You know, you might beat him once or twice, and once or twice is all you need in a tournament. But you might try to employ that same tactic against the kill sage, and he's going to blow you up for it because they're different players. And you're not necessarily improving as a player. You're improving versus said player's current play style at that very time. Of- and I think that's a very uh, non-binary uh, standpoint to have. I think people should be a, a lot more flexible than that and understand that improving yourself and give is the first key to, to having victory in all aspects of life. I feel like, okay. so I, I, I would say I agree with a lot of the points. you. Made. Yeah. I just, I, and it's, it's exactly what you talked about where I've seen people who they look at the number one killer in their scene. They spend all this time grinding this matchup and then they lose to like, kind of like you said, they lose to some other guy who's pretty good, but they just didn't even think about, right. That person never even crossed their mind. Not and then they complain, yeah. I lost, right? They're like, oh, I, if I, but if I had played the best dude, I would have beat him. It's like, that doesn't matter. Yeah. You got to, no, you didn't no. get to him in bracket. It doesn't matter, yeah, right? Exactly. 100%. Nobody cares. Right. No one cares who you think you could have beat. The proof's in the pudding, right? Ult- ultimately, at the end of the day, it matters who you end up beating. Right. And the other big thing that um, you had talked about, um, besides, besides just, you know, focusing on beating people in your scene, uh, it was actually your last point. Oh, hold on. I'm struggling. I oh, I just lost my thought. I had a thought, and it just it went right out the window behind me for a second. It was like, whoosh. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right uh, it was the, um, oh, my goodness. Oh, the improvement. Yeah. Um, definitely one of the big things that I have seen watching footage back. Because uh, another big thing that I see a lot of mid-tier players get stuck on is they will play somebody, and they'll say, I don't know why I'm losing. And then, because I do some coaching, and I'll be like, okay, well, have you have you watched your footage back? And they'll go, no. And it's like, all right, that's fine. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you know, and, I say, and I'll be like, all right, let's watch some footage. So they'll send me a VOD. I'll start walking through the VOD and whatever. And the biggest thing is when you, you keep getting opened up by a setup. And this is something mid-tier players especially struggle with. There will be a setup that will open them up. Sometimes it can be something like, you know, Blue Koo, where he does like the, you know, the, the finger guns, right? He does his command grab. I've the seen people who get, guns. right. Exactly. He's just like the dead. And that's, and we laugh, right? Because that's like a funny thing. But there's plenty of people who they will get opened up by that over and over again, but won't take the time to go, what do I need to do to stop this? No, and, and if you, or I know one player who he's a strong player, but he struggles against Android 21. Oof. And he has lost against 21 players over and over and over again. He could beat players who are better than some of these 21 players. And I, and he keeps saying, I don't know why I keep losing. And it's like, I'm like, have you ever sat down and learned the matchup? It sounds like me and Bardock. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like it's, it's that kind of thing where it's tough when you get, when you get blown up by that kind of character, whether it's a character, whether it's a setup, you have to really kind of go back into the lab, break it down, reverse engineer it until you know it by heart. 
So when you go back and you're in those situations, you're prepared for it already. Yeah, I definitely feel that. Like, there's, like, a lot of matchups that, like, you in this game specifically, like, I've been, like, struggling for me, right? I've been struggling with Vegito. Yep. And with especially with Piccolo. And it's weird to say that, but, like, I've sat down and I've played, like, three or four Vegitos, and I'm like, why can I not win? And, like, I had to sit down and, like, understand the matchup. And, yeah, but that, ma- like, matchups in this game, like, this game is slowly turning into, like, a, how Marvel 3 was, where it's, like, it's not just... It's it's also it's player matchups, but as well as character matchups as well, because you can see different shells as like threats, but like sometimes the the shell might not be strong enough, but the player might be ridiculous. So it could be again like with Tommy said yep. before, like a Sonic Fox, right? Sonic Fox can play any shell he really wants right now, and but he's still a threat. Depending, it doesn't matter like how strong the shell is, but if the shell's super strong, like he's playing right now with Bardock Trunks, it can still lead to seriously bad situations for other players i've watched that firsthand sorry childish vegeto i love you (laughs) but um that's definitely something that is kind of being more apparent in this meta and that and especially with the character patches hopefully coming out soon so yeah i think it's really really important i believe that for me personally, I dealt with a, a time that I was really arrogant and I was arrogant and didn't, I didn't arrogant and unwilling to accept criticism from myself. So mm-hmm. I didn't watch my games for a long time. Then I said, I, you know, I studied film after games and during football and my coach would curse me out if I wasn't, uh, or, or flame me up if I wasn't you know, paying attention because in the end, you're not only, if you don't take advantage of all your time and you don't do everything that you can be to getting to, to commit to getting better, then you're wasting your time. You're playing, you're playing a game, a game that you say you want to get strong at, that you're not, that you're investing plenty of time into, but you're not investing your time the correct way. And you know, you're not investing your time correctly. So, as Voss would say from Far Cry 3, if you're doing the same thing and you're not having the desired results that you want, then that is, uh, excuse my language, insanity. So, you need to, to understand that these are the things that the best players do. If you want to be one of the best players, not saying that I am, but I'm like any, anyone else. If you want to be one of the best players, then you have to employ the best tactics. Right. And one of those very easy ones is not like you don't have a follow button on online or people who don't stream every match anyway. You or you have, you can you can carry a USB uh, uh, USB drive and record matches if you have casuals. There's tons of things you can do. Watch them over and just try not to get hit by the same thing that hit you before. And you've already improved slightly just from that. So uh, yeah, I agree. So we've been asked. There's a couple questions in chat. Jay, do we have time for them? Uh, yeah, I think we can. We can start delving into some of these here. Um, okay. I think we've already touched on a couple of these. Uh, one one question. This is like this will be a good jump off one. Um, we had from Strife DD. He wanted to ask, what do you think of Videl in the current meta? Where do you put Videl? I think Videl is strong. I do not believe she's S tier at the moment, like many other players do. I think she's a strong character mm. who excels with a certain type of assist structure, mainly being a horizontal beam. I believe that she is uh, very dynamic. You know, Sonic has shown with her resets and stuff like that. She's a very dynamic, versatile character who is hard to zone out, who is, uh, has a strong mix-up, However, she does have some flaws. Her normals aren't amazing. They're good. They are good. They're not 17. They're good normal. Yeah. But they aren't amazing. She's not going to out footsie a Cell player or a 21 or a Broly um, or Kid Boo players. It's just not going to happen. She also, I believe the dodge is good. Okay. So you, However, you are the dodge camp is good. Okay. I, I am the dodge camp is good, but it has flaws. Like, for example, Bardock. If I do Rebellion Spear Vanish versus Videl, then 
She can't dodge me. That being said, I correct me if I'm wrong. She may be. I don't believe she can DP. I think she would have to do a backwards DP. Um, but yeah, she can't. She can't just dodge you. I mean, reflect like other characters, and that's important. Piccolo. Piccolo puts an orb on her when she's knocked down. She can't oh, reflect. yep. Vegeta. Same with Vegeta. She can't <laughs> reflect it. So there are a lot of things that she she just can't can't deal with um, in the way that we are we are used to dealing with with the other parts of the cast. Yeah. Lingering hitboxes um, are just a massive issue for her. Yeah, it can be yeah. really something. I think that her level one is good. Like I think she's a good character. I think she's a a a plus, maybe S minus. But when I think for who's the strongest in the game, I don't think Fidel. I think Bardock, Gotenks, Kibu, those characters. I don't think Fidel is like I wouldn't. No one's dropping Bardock for Fidel. It's not gonna happen. So when when someone does that, I might um, consider her, you know, stronger. Right. That being said. I haven't played a Videl in tournament. I played a lot of them online. I've watched a lot of Videl footage, so I'm not the the dictionary on Videl. But I do, from what I've seen and how I've seen the other DLC characters and their release points and how much of an impact on the meta they have I had. I don't think she is. Okay. In, I I think she's strong, just not in that. Upper, 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 upper tier. Like, right, like not top five, but maybe I mean, somewhere yeah. top ten. Yeah, she could possibly be top ten. Possibly. How do you feel about G- um, since we talked about? Um, might as well ask. Uh, how do you feel about Jiren? Uh, it's a lot of people have been making noise about this character since the release, and there's a lot of people that switched some of their characters on their teams to Jiren. Um, some notables being random themed as example like Scamby and like a bunch of players. So how do you feel about Jiren? I think Jiren is strong. I think Videl is uh, much stronger, but I think Jiren is strong. He occupies a a place on many people's team that Cell used to or still does for some people. Um, Vegito as well. Um, I think that his neutral is incredibly strong. I think it's impossible to don't him effect- effectively. However, okay. I do believe that his lack of a mix-up uh, is more important than people think of. I think he's a very good counterfeit character. If you're Interesting. playing against a 21 or a Ginyu or... Oh, or, has a Ginyu or player, or yeah. I, I, I do not want to see a Jiren who knows what they're doing. It is absolutely yeah. nightmarish. If you're, if you're playing against one of those characters, I think he's an easy pick if you have a pocket Jiren. Uh, Galileo actually... He actually... Did not play him at this recent Fighting Tuesday. Galileo, uh, Evil Champions, very strong Dragon Ball player. Um, and he kind of had the same view I have. We, I believe Jiren is strong. He plays Jiren. I don't, but he, he said virtually the same thing. Jiren is a strong character, and I'll quote him. He's a strong character. We'll paraphrase. He's a strong character that needs to be played under the right circumstances. Because you got to remember, he is tall. He doesn't have a low. Yep. command grab is very slow. So these are important things when you're thinking about the Bardock Gotenks meta that we're in right now. Right. So another question that we've received is, so this is kind of in reference. I have a one to 10 scale that I put players on uh, to go very briefly. 10 is like the, the like Kazunoko, Goichi, Sonic Fox. Nines are like your hook gang gods, things like that. And then eights, eights are going to be people who are going to be like your LKs and things like that, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and the question was kind of relating to what separates the players who are kind of like your your LKs, your, your, you know, like you're extremely strong, you expect them to get top eights, like incredible players, versus your people that you're expecting to win, take home a tournament when you see their name on a list. I think that the player base is much closer in skill than a lot of, especially casual viewers, believe. Uh, I I believe that, for example, that eight and nine that you do you mention right now, yeah. I think it's actually like an eight point eight and a nine or something like right, that. Right, so a little bit more I fine, that, yeah. I think that a lot of players are playing teams and shells that they have been playing since the beginning of the 
the game, like I mentioned. Yeah. And those are the players who you see having the most success concurrently. Um, Hook has been playing Vegeta and Piccolo since the game dropped. Yep. He knows tons of situations with Vegeta and Piccolo. LK has switched teams eight times. Same like myself. Fenrich has been playing Bardock, Cell, Vegeta for a year. I have switched teams 10 times. I think right. that's incredibly important. Sonic played 16 and Bardock, who is actually a just a better Goku Black, and he had the most success he ever had in the game, winning Evo and, and doing great things. And those are the characters he's played. I also think character strength plays into a lot of that too. Uh, let's use LK as an example again. If yeah. LK is playing Ginyu Goku 18 and Hook is playing Piccolo Bardock Goku, or Sage is playing Adult Gohan 16 um, other S tier character, or Kami is playing 21 Bardock Yamcha, then you're you're who, who do you expect to win? You know, you the guy who who has the better characters because this game is very 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 character driven. The people in the game's history, the people who play the best characters, usually win. Kaimart, sorry, like we love Kaimart. I'm actually friends with Kaimart, but Kaimart probably not going to beat Kazunoko. And it doesn't all have to do with Kazunoko being the better player. Kaimart's playing Vegeta and Team Gohan, and Kazunoko is playing Gotenks, Adult Gohan, and Yamcha. So I'm probably going to bet a smart person is going to bet their money on Kazunoko because he's great and he's playing the uh, amazing characters, which are proven to be good. So I think that's it. I I just Interesting. I, I believe I believe the player base is much 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 closer uh, than people think. Yeah, in a com- really in a conversation good. that I had with Double uh, L, I was talking about uh, my personal view that I think anybody who is currently listed in the top twenty on like the SRK rankings, I think anybody can beat anybody within that tier, except for the top three. And, like, that's kind of how I feel about it. I feel like there are, th- you know, the three players who are my 10s, personally, who I do feel like are playing currently just a cut above in their own ways, right? Not exact Like, Sonic's not playing, you know, out of his mind the same way Kaz is, right? Their styles are different. But I think they are kind of have that little bit of extra oomph right now. But yeah. I, I do agree with your assessment that the people at the top, like, maybe besides those three, and those are debatable. I mean, that's just my personal take. Um, are a lot closer than people give them credit. Because I, I think you are right in that people do maybe stratify a little bit too much the difference between, you know, you know, the people there. And I think, and honestly, you're the first person I've really had bring on um, how important characters have been. Because a lot of people have kind of just said, like, oh, here's your, like, you know, five S tier characters yeah on the biggest when you got when you got seven bardocks in top eight and i'm the only person not playing bardock right who are you not going to put your money on (laughs) yeah Yeah. no it makes sense bardock has been a bardock gotenks uh kibu adult gohan uh 16 these characters have been top five the longest right and the people playing these characters have won all the tournaments so if if the Bardock players are winning all the tournaments, yeah, the best players are using Bardock, and the other players who are losing aren't are using Bardock. Using Bardock yeah, it's, right. and it's almost like Bardock's Bardock really good. Yeah, really is really good. One. So it's I think that's a bigger bigger thing than people understand. If you're using sixteen and I'm using anchor goku and you have anchor 16 pre-patch 16 oh my god win, yeah and you and you're the best player maybe or just maybe it's that 16 is also really good and that's what and i don't think it's a testament of i don't think people are being carried by their characters yeah i wouldn't i don't think you can be carried by a character i think dp the characters with dps help people with bad defense but i don't think you can be carried by a character in this game, I do believe that characters are really. If, like, I'll use it again. If Bardock is winning and is in seven top eights, and if you mention, and if these like the seven, eight, and nines that you mentioned, yeah, aren't playing Bardock, and all the tens, Goichi, Sonic, etc., are playing Bardock, 
then perhaps Bardock is a, a factor in them being a 10 as well as them being good. That's so right. I think it's going to be really interesting to see, especially with this meta, with everyone knowing what's good now yeah. and most people playing what's good, including myself. I'm Floki will tell you. Floki, what's my name on PSN now? Uh, it's Dark No Kami. It's Dark No Kami. I'm Bane. <laughs> Bane. <laughs> oh, God, dude. No, I'm in the darkness. Oh, my, my goodness. So, but like I said, I don't believe people are being carried. Okay. I don't believe, I don't think you can be carried in this game. I just think that these characters are strong. These characters yeah. have won virtually every tournament, those five I mentioned. And if you're not playing those characters, it's it's not it's not a um it's not rocket science. Like the people that are tens are playing them. And right. I, I guarantee you, anyone that most of the people you're thinking of in that eight or nine category yeah. are not playing S tier characters. I can right. or do not have multiples of those characters on their team and i think that's why me because i've played almost everyone in multiple games i've played kazunoko in guilty gear yeah i played dogra in guilty gear i've played uh nico maki in blaze blue i've played nico maki in guilty gear i played nico maki and no, i haven't played him in street fighter we never played that but i've played <laughs> i've seen sonic play mortal kombat i've i've played these NRS players in Mortal right. Kombat. So I have a good uh, view, in my opinion, on who is the strongest after playing them in this game. And I believe that all of our scenes are much closer than than we think. And after playing them, and I when I play LK and he plays Bardock, I'm really having trouble with him. When he plays Ginyu, I'm really not having trouble with him. Right. this like... Oh, may, maybe that was the issue. So, right. Maybe there's something that's... something else afoot. I, I think that's actually yeah. really interesting. It's actually so, funny. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, even Hook. Hook has made that change to a stronger character, picking Bardock and says, so I want to be stuck on Bardock because he's yeah, there, Bardock. there are many more. There are many more examples. <laughs> but you brought up Hook. I So even Hook. Yeah. Uh, has just had so much success now that he's picked even more success now that he's picked up that character and he's in that upper tier. Yes. Uh, Nakio. Nakio's had tons of success with Team Cass. Uh, right. I, I, he's not going to have success if he plays base Goku, base Vegeta, whatever the hell team yeah. he's playing. Like, you're not going to have as much success. You know, Nakio gets a lot of flack for playing uh, Team Cass for some yeah. reason. It's and I, I think it's a pretty, um, sure. I think it's pretty, I would say it's kind of immature when you think about it, because mm -hmm. like I said, you, you always want to put yourself in the best position to win. Yeah. Like, do you want your, do you want your daughter to date a guy who's, who's not a good person, but you like his haircut? No, <laughs> you know, it's the same thing. Do you, do you, it, it's, it's less weird everywhere, but fighting games. Gotta have good hair wow. game. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Very yeah. important. It's, in every sport or esport, yep. but fighting game, playing now there of course there are characters and guns that people hate, but people aren't denounced for using characters. Like no no team if a team signs LeBron James, they're not going to get crapped on for signing LeBron James. Yeah, they they get praised. Uh, the wingman, if you're using the wingman, you don't get. I might not like it because it's overpowered, yeah. but. I'm not going to be mad at you. If you, if you turn on Overwatch right now, you're, Overwatch League, you're going to watch Goats vs. Goats. You're going to watch Goats. Oh, yeah. Dude. Like, oh, gosh. A, a, I know. And exactly. That's the thing. It's it's dominant oh, strategy. Man. As players, in pretty much every game, players are going to find what is the strongest, and they're going to run it. And, yeah, I, I can understand from a spectator's perspective why oh, that can be frustrating. Goats, man. I, I'm, like, I'm sorry. I got to bring up Goats. Like, it's the best like, example. Like, that's like playing Apex and you just run into lifelines like all day. No, you don't understand, Floki. Goats is something. Different. No, Goats is a Listen, monstrous. You, you just I, can't. I, I, you I just can't not play playing Overwatch, so oh, I don't man. have to worry about that. All the skillful freaking heroes, the skill shot heroes, you just can't play them anymore. Brigida ran ran wild for a whole year. I, Goats is just really. It's bad. It was bad. It go, goats is it goats is its whole thing. And actually, um, it's funny you mentioned Nico Maki. Now I have no idea if you remember this. 
But I want you to I want you to think way back to Summer Jam last year. Ooh, I don't know if I was there. I was no, there. you weren't. You weren't there, but you were in the Twitch chat. Okay. Um, and I was actually doing commentary for Summer Jam, and Nico Maki was playing. And I don't know if you remember this, but I kept mixing him and you up. I remember you. Do you remember <laughs> this? I remember you. I, yeah, I've I never remember. gotten a chance to talk to you, but I just wanted to say I'm sorry about that. Uh, I just okay. wanted to take the chance while I had it. It's okay, man. Yeah, Comedy is worldwide. We're, we're everywhere. Exactly. We, Look, I was... We are a legion. I was literally prepping for this podcast way back at Summer Jam. Little, little yeah. did you know, the 10-dimensional chess out here. Yeah, man. Past Jay Diesel knew what was up. Exactly. Exactly. Also, Don't come at him. Like, also, one one question uh, I want to slip in personally because I I watch a lot of match footage, and out of every player in the world that I've watched, there's there's one player who I just consistently I've done I I can't break his play style. I just I don't get it. Having played against Sonic Fox, what is, what is it like? Because when I watch him, it feels like I'm just watching extreme fundamentals is like the only way I can describe it. Yeah. But it's, and, and I kind of wanted to hear from your perspective, what it's like playing against him or what makes him so monstrous. Cause I understand it's fundamentals. Like I can see the mix ups and everything, but there's just some X factor. I can't quite describe, but I was hoping, I, I don't even know if you can answer my question, but. Uh, Sonic is uh, like people say, I'm like a genius. I don't think I'm a, I don't think I'm a genius until I want to even. Sonic is like a real genius of uh, offense. He's he has a talent per se for offense. He knows when people. He's like the shark. Yeah, that, that smells blood. He but he's like, like in like a furry body, you know. So he's he has a real talent for offense, and yeah. these games are very offensively geared. So not only does he have a talent for it, the games fit his his talent, and he's also really strong at making reads. So. The two things that he is the strongest at are the things that are promoted by like Dragon Ball a lot. Okay. So he gets like a power boost. Um, right. He's also just very hard to read. You know, he's he's a a student of change, switching up his options and and really having interactive play. Even though he plays set play characters, yeah, he tries. He's still very interactive. How he adapts to people, I think he adapts in ways a lot of people don't. I think he he's thinking um, the way he he's interesting. He he's a guy that uses all his characters' tools if he can, the, even if the tools aren't good. If there's something that they have, he uses. It. And I respect that a lot. I think the biggest thing about him though is just his ad- adaptability. Very 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 okay. very very good. First hand is crazy too. Like play, I I I know me you, you, both me and Kami both play him. Like I played him at NEC, and then you've had your fair share of Fox. The dude's crazy. Like anything that you can think, like any mix-up, like watching so much footage back on the guy, like any character he touches, and like his fun is so good, like he can like make any character work. And I think that's super important in fighting games nowadays because not a lot of people will talk about it. Like it kind of goes back to what you mentioned before, like. For all we know, Sonic Fox can play seventeen and make that character look nutty. Yeah, but no he's, he's very strong. Yeah. Um that character yeah, seventeen is a sight to see sometimes. I heard he's a modded character in Fighters. <laughs> I heard he's modded. Yeah, he's um, he's definitely a character who I am interested in seeing more of. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of players actually on the East Coast that play him. Axis is probably one of the best examples of that. Jazz yep. rap, stuff like that. So. For sure. Jazz rap um, at Kumite. Very strong players. Heartbreaker. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially um, the, with this weekend upcoming, and we're glad we had, you, we had you on for this episode because this is like a good preview and like having all this discussion is a nice preview for um, not only for myself or for Jay. Um, but for the viewers at home to like kind of like watch out for those things like like while they're watching final round and maybe from some future tournaments for like, sure up ahead um yeah final round's gonna be a definitely interesting real quick uh since we touched on apex slight oh we uh, do have to ask this absolutely we do it is like a staple of the show kami is 
super staple. Do you? I know you play Apex. I, I know play that. a lot of Apex. I am Who an is Apex your champion? Legend. Who is your champion? I mean, the champions I frequent the most are Bloodhound, okay. Bangalore, Wraith, and Pathfinder at the moment. Everyone else, it's not that I think they're poor. I think Caustic is bad. Um, Caustic needs everyone, help. That's what he Yeah, wants. I think Caustic is bad. I've played Mirage a bit. I think his bamboozles, they, they've done a really great job of doing that. It literally, like, he, he'll, the, band, the Mirage will aim down sights. It does crazy stuff. You really believe it's another person. Um, so I think they did a great job on him. He actually got nerfed. I was thinking about playing him until he got nerfed. But I play um, Bangalore, Bloodhound. I thought Wraith was bad initially, but I've come to like her a lot more. Right. And I've been playing Pathfinder recently because I like his voice line. Pathfinder is the best. Like I've, we actually had um, Hypnotic, formerly known as Monkey Madness, on last week. Yeah, and cool. Did, really good player. Yeah, he did say like, and it's funny. Like it was just a telepathy between Piccolo players. I was oh. like, you play Pathfinder. He's like, yep. And I was like, it makes sense. Yeah, I like that. I like that um, legend a lot. Cool. Got it. Um, Got to get him with the grapple. I, I, I'm personally a, uh, I'm a, I'm a lifeline and a Bangalore. I, I gotta, I gotta tie it down for my boys. I don't know how many times my boys can't find meds, and someone's got to be there. Someone's got to hold them down. I'm, a, I'm a support man. You got to be there. Jay, Jay, you disappoint. You know I thought you play you play Ginyu and you actually no that makes sense because you play Ginyu. Yo, I like being able to throw projectiles. Okay, <laughs> what what can I say? It's me as a person. Um, before we wrap up and get into that wrap up section, um, we do this also with our chat uh, with our guesses. Um, since we know majority of the season through, um, with Videl, Jiren, and Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, as well as the Dragon Ball Super Movie Broly, uh, we have two slots left on that little board that we got at the uh. At the World Finals, which I know you attended, um, what is those two fi- uh, final slots? Would you like to see Kami? Two characters. I would like to see Janempa, and I would like to see Bojack. This guy. This is why I like Kami. Kami. Oh, Bojack on Bojack Bojack Unbound. Bojack. Really? I have not heard a single Bojack's person okay. say Bojack. Bojack's I want to see Bojack. Okay. I need the pirate. I need that guy in the game. Bojack's OD. Would you would you do the full power Bojack or like the need, base form? I, I need base form into full power. It, make make the full power Bojack and install Level super. Three. Level three. Install I need boys. Bojack in the game. Yeah. He's really cool. Or, or they could just put his 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 really cute um, um teammate. I forget oh. her name. Oh my god, I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, but uh, Bojack is really really cool. I want Janep in the game. And I don't want him to be a tall character, but I know he is going to be. He's gonna right. be. He's gonna be fuzzyable. Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> Audrey, Audrey, that man is. That yo, man definitely good. I I literally yeah. love it when people show when they showed like the trailer for Broly. Literally, all people were spamming. He's fuzzyable, and I was just yeah. like, "Thanks, guys. Glad yeah, glad you you enjoying the character reveal. Like, come on." Yeah. Also, I did find the name of the of the uh, her, of the teammate. It's Zangia. I don't know Zangia, how to that's her name. That was my main. That's my main in Rage and Blast 2. Rage and Blast 2. Jesus Christ. That game is old. Um, so we're wrapping up. Um, what is there, uh, this is the section where you get to shill out, shout anybody what, out. I, whatever you want to talk about, my man. Is, you get five you, minutes. Run with you. it, man. Um, it. Hmm, shout out. Shout outs to all the players that people don't really know about. Uh, shout out Monkey Madness. Shout out Skeezer. Shout out you, Floki. You're doing a really good job. Let's go, Flo. Um, Kazuki. <laughs> Kazuki. Um, shout out to all the people that I play on that play when I when I randomly ask them to play on <laughs> online. Um, and to everyone who supports me. Um, follow my Twitch, every YouTube, everything's no comedy. But yeah, I think the biggest shout out is those people. Uh, so I I really don't have the strongest local scene, so it's really important for me to be able to play online. And for people, I, I know it can be a bit of a hassle, me asking randomly to play or, or asking for a time to play because a lot of people don't like online. But I really do need the games, and I appreciate talking about them in a respectful manner as well as being able to just play and share information, all that good stuff. So it's really important to me, and I appreciate it. 
So that's that's pretty much it for me. All right. Well, on that note, I will. This has been JD. Um, this is me, your boy J Diesel, signing off. Got This has been Floki. Wow, what a day! And I pass it to you, no. Um, thank you guys for having me. Uh, this is this is no Kami. Like I said before, you can follow me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Everything's no Kami. Um, look out for me at final round. I'm gonna have okay. my I'm gonna have my headband ready. We'll be grinding. We'll, we'll, we'll grind, Kami. We've got this. Absolutely. Sure. Hope you guys love the podcast. Drop a follow if you like. This will be on YouTube in a bit. And I've been Jay Diesel. This is Floki. We've had no Kami today. And this has been Under the Radar. Peace out, guys. Peace, guys.